This video is all about clarifying my own thinking to do with making a show called The Laptop Show. It's also about OBS Studio and how that works and it's also about Sony Vegas and about producing videos. Now to get started the first thing is which is, is super weird is look down on the right hand side and you'll see that there is an aeroplane button which means I put my laptop in airplane mode. I'm not connected to the internet and that's a very weird feeling to have but that's an aside. What we have here on OBS Studio is three scenes plus the main scene. So in other words let me talk through it and what I'm going to do is show you that on producing a show which is a video really that we've got choices and that's either to do it kind of like live to YouTube, live recorded to your disk or produced into a regular post edited video with all this stuff going on here. So this is about my choices and about your thinking if you want to do a similar thing. Now first of all what we've got is um, as I've said a million times before I'm a former classroom teacher. I did that in quite a few stages and I started off with a chalkboard, I went into a whiteboard over the years and then I went into a data projector and I'm sure that if I stepped back into a real life classroom I'll see a ton of tablets and other gadgets flying around the place with the children. Now here's the thing, I'm on scene one and you can clearly see that it's set up on the right hand side and it's got a whiteboard, a black screen of my, my laptop and some text. So to transition into scene two, we click scene two and I want to go into the black area and the way I do that I click transition and then it slides through. Okay, and I've, when I say slides through, we've got a fade of 500 milliseconds, we've got one of 300 milliseconds, and I've also got, quite interestingly, I've just found actually, which is an aside to OBS Studio, that if I do a drop down here, I've also got a swipe, and I'm going to use swipe 2. And what happens is if I hit swipe 2, and I hit transition, look, it actually swipes it up. If I hit swipe 1 here, look, transition, and it does a right to left. And I've just found that that if you add, you click the plus over here and you've got swipe. So I've got four different versions to go from one slide to the next. I've got a cut, I've got a timed fade, and I've got two different swipes. I think there's about four different swipes, but the point is we can do many things. Now, if I opened up, um, say, the video, I would say, right, I'm on scene. Um, let's go back to transition into scene one. I want to go into scene two, so it's queued up here in the green area. I hit transition and we're closed in. I queue up number three, which is a welcome, which is the top right of my whiteboard. I hit transition and there we are to number three. And then number four, I want to go in, which is just looking at a couple of the graphics on the laptop show pens uh, and the board rubber. And I can hit a fade this time. And the moment I hit a fade, it fades through and fade and fade and transition. Notice that the transition button is taking the message from whatever is down here. So if I did a swipe one, the moment I hit, it swipes. The moment I go into a fade, it fades. So, so what we've got here is that when I open up, I'm just going to put that back again and say, here I am recording to my desktop or recording to uh, live at YouTube. I want to step back literally and say, here is my classroom and here is the laptop show with a whiteboard. And I may be coming off of, and this is the important part, I might be coming off of the actual screen recording. And I literally want to step back and there is my laptop show where I can put some, some notes down here and I put some um, graphics of a few colored marker pens and the, the font actually on this is called permanent marker. I do this live, I can dial in, I can dial out as I wish to. The other one is if I wanted to produce a standard post edited video is I do it like this and this takes a bit of work and a lot of skills when I say a lot of skills not not me personally but just you know skills from people to learn it took me I'm, I never make it a secret it took me 18 months I think to be proficient at video editing so this is um, Sony Vegas 
uh, Movie Studio Platinum 13 and let me play it, watch this area up on the top right because what I'm doing is as I'm playing a clip which is only 20 seconds long I'm going through some keyframes here so I'll show you what I mean so if I drag this on the keyframe editor is it goes through and then after it gets to 3 seconds I go in with a couple of keyframes to my close up of the black screen I stay around for a few more seconds and then I go to a welcome then I stay there for a little while then I go over to a down to the marker pens stay there and then I go back again so in practice to play it so here I am one two three notice that if I'm doing a voiceover to this I'm gonna to have to get my timings pretty accurate otherwise I mess it all up or I have everything that that's why it takes it so long to actually do a video edit it sometimes and that's the finish done. So what you've seen here is a comparison between Sony Vegas with keyframe editing with one slide, one slide only. That's all it is. There's no video there. There's no slides. There's no text overlays. This is a PNG which has been bought in from um, Google Drawings actually. So stop. Then I go back and if I just go back uh, quickly to the studio here is that if I started this off again I am free to speak as long as I want to yes I have to have my scenes organized and if I take them off as you know I've just got a black area this is this is a thing and this is really interesting because this is a, an aside and an extra to this video before I end it because I've been going for six minutes oh my god so we know that we can drag this around and watch this if I drag horizontally and diagonally if I go up look I've got a black border there and what happens is it will snap to the right so if I just transition that can you see that it's got a black area on the right hand side if I bring that back in again and this time I snap it down like that then what happens is when I transition I've now got a border to the bottom uh, have I done that right so all I'm trying to say is that that on here when you drag and resize these images look if you bring it down to the left you get or down rather you get a border at the bottom bring it to the right you get a border um, to the right but if you keep it because in other words it is very difficult to snap because you see this red circle is snapped to the right if I bring it in I can actually you see what I mean I'm bringing that and then that one snaps here and I've got the gap at the bottom. I did this by accident actually, but I think it's quite interesting. I don't know if that's intention, intentional. Uh, let me just bring that in and then bring it in. See what I mean? It's quite interesting really. Okay, um, that will do here. It's um, I'm just going to shove this straight onto YouTube. It's 7 minutes 50. Thank you very much.